Tiananmen Square in the capital Beijing is the political symbol of China. It also became a target for terrorists. On October 28, 2013, an SUV ran through barricades in front of the gate tower and burst into flames. The attack killed two civilians and wounded over 40. The driver and the two passengers all died. The authorities soon declared the incident a terrorist attack. They said it was not an isolated incident outside Xinjiang, and that it marked a new phase of terrorist violence in China. Police identified the driver as Aison. In recovered selfie videos, Aison burns national flags of a dozen countries. Before the Tiananmen attack, the group swore so-called jihad on a barren hill on the outskirts of Wumuchi. Police also detained the other five members involved in the attack. They include the couple Hushur and Tohatinias. <laughs> When this couple signed on, they left their six-year-old son and two-year-old daughter at home. They sold all their possessions in preparation. Tohatinia says she was convinced that they could enter paradise by killing. Soon after the Tiananmen attack, in a clip obtained by a monitoring organization, a radical Islamic group claimed responsibility and warned of future attacks in the Chinese capital. Chinese authorities have blamed the East Turkestan Islamic Movement, or ETIM, a shadowy Xinjiang-based group with ostensible ties to Al-Qaeda. Some Western media don't believe it and point a finger at China's hotline policies. But Chinese police say they have clear evidence that the incident is linked with the separatist forces outside Xinjiang which advocate the use of violence. The police investigation provided deeper insight into what have been the roads to radicalism. Hmm. 
Most killers, though claiming to be loyal to Islam, have very little knowledge of the Quran. To achieve their purposes, the extremist forces deliberately distorted religious teachings. Typically, they describe the jihad of the Quran as a holy war against infidels. The Quran is the key source of guidance for billions of believers. Many scholars say the correct understanding of the Quran, especially the word jihad, is crucial. Killing civilians can be justified by Islam. So that was crystal clear that Muslims should try to establish justice through all possible peaceful means. And if this happens, then Allah is opening no way for them to fight. Muslim就是主张和平的人。History shows a recurring threat of separatism. At the turn of the 20th century, separatist and religious extremists inside and outside China called on all ethnic groups who spoke Turkic languages and believed in Islam to join in creating the theocratic state, which they called East Turkestan. They spread the misconceptions that Uyghurs were the only masters of Xinjiang, that the Uyghur cultures of Xinjiang were not Chinese culture, and that Islam was the only religion practiced in Xinjiang. They clamored for opposition to all ethnic groups other than Turks and for the annihilation of infidels. Such instigation has led to constant violence and terrorism in Xinjiang. Experts say many young people are brainwashed with the ideal of so-called jihad, which encouraged them to die for their belief in order to enter paradise. Many followers no longer possess a mind of their own. Mernisa was a university student. 
She says after she got in touch with a group of extremists and watched jihad videos, she decided to join them. Marnisa took part in the attack on December 15, 2013 in Shufu County, Kashgar, in which two policemen were killed. Police have also confiscated a large number of violent audio and video materials. Authorities say the recruitment usually begins online. But who directs them and how is a question that requires more time and effort to discover. The authorities believe that since 1990, there have been new developments in terrorism which have posed some of the biggest dangers in China. They include new tactics, target selection, geographic reach, and international connections. Recent reports have revealed that there are hundreds of Chinese fighters in Syria, and some jihadists have brought their war home to Xinjiang. This is what happened as early as 1989 of the Soviet-Afghan war. I'm uh, witness to the fact that a number of uh, Muslims from China, the province of Xinjiang, the Uyghurs, they also ended up in those uh, training camps and they were trained as jihadists. So when the war ended in uh, 1989, some of them went back, but uh, uh, most of them were not uh, de-indoctrinated and they were used uh, as tools. China is doing everything it can to ensure security. In the border areas of the autonomous region, eyes are wide open for signs. What worries the government is the link between terrorism and outside forces. So much of the threat is beyond China's reach. <laughs>